Okay, welcome to the day two video for our first day of notes for the year. Um, right now you can see all the answers or the definitions for this first part. Um, the only reason I did that is it would save us some time. If you need more time to view these, you can always pause your recording after I go through them. Uh, let's just talk about these really quickly. Uh, base and exponent. So a base is just the number. Exponent is the, uh, the thing that the number is raised to. So in this case, the base would be 3 the exponent would be 7 and we call that a power expression if it has both those components that's the third part um, a variable you guys should be familiar with using X uh, other variables are also used in math um, it's a letter that just represents a number and generally the variables are um, they're called variables because they are not constant they, they change we can put different things in for those variables um, an expression an expression is basically a statement that has no equal sign versus an equation is a statement that has an equal sign. Um, for example, if I just wrote 3x plus 4, that's an expression. 3x plus 4 equals 2, that's an equation now. This does not have an equal sign, this does. A mathematical model is just an expression that represents a real life situation. Um, term. This is important because some people get confused on this. Uh, terms are just parts of expressions. So if I wrote 2x plus 3, which I have down there, it has two terms, the 2x and the 3. So you could always think about it as being separated by the addition or subtraction sign. Uh, 2 and x are one term because they're multiplied together. It's one piece of the, of the expression. Uh, coefficient is a number in front of the variable. So if, again, if you look right above there, um, the coefficient for this uh, term would be 2. It's the number in front of the variable. A constant would be a number. Uh, there's no variable with it. So again, if we look at this 2x plus 3 that I have up here, the variable is, um, I'm sorry, the, the constant is 3. And like terms, they have the same variable and exponent, but they could have different coefficients in front. So these two things here would be this, uh, like terms. We can add and subtract them together because they have the same variable and same exponent. They're both squared. And finally, uh, we can talk about an identity. is a statement that equates two equal expressions. Um, so we'll be doing more identities and proofs with that later, but that's what an identity is. So again, I'll keep this up here. Uh, if you need to keep writing, uh, just pause it and finish up the screen, and I will now scroll down. Okay, so order of operations, you guys should have done this many times by now. Um, we call it PEMDAS. Okay, P stands for parentheses, but really it doesn't have to just be parentheses. Um, you have to do the operations uh, in the grouping, sim we call them grouping symbols, but you probably learned them as parentheses, so you want to do all the operations in grouping symbols first. And then in the grouping symbols, you follow the rest of the order. Uh, so it doesn't have to just be parentheses. It could also be brackets or anything else. Uh, e is stands for do anything with exponents. Next. And the exponent only goes to the number. It doesn't go to the sign in front of that number unless the sign is also in the parentheses with the number. And we'll see an example of that later. All right, so now this one here, M and D stand for multiply and divide. So that's the next step. Now, when you multiply and divide, you want to, if there's a, a bunch of different multiplication and division on uh, once you get to this step, you want to do this from left to right. So from left to right. And then, once you have taken care of all the multiply and divide, you can add and subtract. And this, again, goes from left to right. And right now, you're probably thinking, yes, this is very easy. And it, in, in, in practice, it is. You guys should have seen this. But then I give you something like number 4. <clears throat> and number 4 is a simplify the expression. Again, there's no equal sign, but we need to simplify this. Always look for the grouping or parentheses first, and you want to kind of work your from the inside out. So I'm going to color code these steps. I see these parentheses. I cannot add 11 and A together because these are different things. So the next step is um, this grouping symbol here. 
Well, this grouping symbol here, I have an 8 minus a and then times this. So the first thing I can do is multiply the a into the 11 and the uh, other a. Now, with it, you want to take the sign in front of it. It's actually a negative a. So my step one, I'm going to rewrite this as 7a minus parentheses 9 minus a parentheses 8. And now here's the new stuff. This becomes, when you multiply, minus 11a, and this becomes minus a squared. Okay, so that's the new thing that we just did. We just did multiplication. Now we look in this grouping symbol again, and again, you're working your way inside out. Uh, we do not have, so this is step one. We do not have anything we can combine here, so we look in the next grouping symbol, which is from here to here. Oh, from here to here, the outside one. We can't do 9 minus a yet, but again, kind of like the last one, we have a minus a that's being multiplied in. So we can do that. So I'm going to rewrite this as 7a minus 9. Oh, I should keep the parentheses. We're not doing that parentheses yet. Now I'm multiplying the minus a into everything. So this becomes a minus 8a. This becomes a positive. 11a squared because there's two a's multiplying together and it's positive because two negatives and this is becoming a positive a cubed so we're almost there we have one grouping symbol left and all that grouping symbol is telling us to do is there is a you can think of this as two ways <clears throat> multiply by a negative one or just uh, distribute the minus sign but that's basically what's happening here there's like an implied one in front of here okay so we have to do that to all the grouping symbols, change the sim uh, signs. Um, I should have probably color coded this, but um, this is the new part, by the way, the green part that we just did from the top. So that's the new part from the one before it. And now we're going to multiply by the negative one. So we have our third step is 7a. This becomes a minus 9. And let me let me color code this one while I remember. Minus nine. This becomes a positive eight a. This becomes a minus eleven a squared, and this becomes a minus a cubed. Now, all the grouping symbols are gone. We have only multiple are only adding and subtracting, and we can only add and subtract like terms. I'm gonna look here and go um, cubed squared to the first power, no a to the first power. So I can combine the positive 8a and the positive 7a. The other thing is it says write the answer in descending order. What that means is descending exponent order. So I'll write both. I'll do the fourth step with combining those. So I have a minus 9 still. This became a plus 15a. That's the new thing that I just uh, added together, the 7 and the 8. And then I still have the minus 11a squared and the minus a cubed. And then I have to just write it in descending exponent order. When you write that, remember, take the symbol in front of the term. That goes with it. So my final answer in descending order is negative a cubed, a minus 11a squared, a positive 15a, and then a minus 9. And this is the answer that I would like. Okay, so just remember that. Um, be careful when you're working these. Always work inside out. Uh, multiply, rewrite it, then combine, and if you can't, you have to multiply again. Alright, last two problems. Again, if you want to try these on your own before you do them, uh, you can pause your video at any time and see if you can do it. This just says write an expression for the area of the figure. So, First, I need an expression. Well, to find the area of a right triangle, it's base times height divided by 2. B times H over 2. I know B is the N, so I'm going to rewrite this as N plus 10. That's the base. I'll just, yeah. So N plus 10 is the base. And then the height is N. and then all over 2. Alright, so we want to multiply this out. 
So my expression turns into n squared plus 10n over 2. And you cannot divide the 2 because there's no 2 in front of this one. It stays the way it is. Okay. Then it says evaluate for the given value. Well, I'm telling you that n is actually 40 in this case. So let's evaluate what the area is. The area turns into 40 squared plus 10 times 40 all over 2. And if you use your calculator to get that, um, you should get 1,000. And since I didn't give units, we can always write, we know area should be in square units from geometry. And that is the final answer. So this is one answer right here. The n squared plus 10n over 2, that's the in expression. And then we evaluated it using 40 for that expression. OK, last one. You, are, uh, you buy a used car with 37,148. Based on your regular driving, you plan to drive 15,000 miles each year that you own it. Write an expression for the number of miles that appear on the odometer at the end of each year. Evaluate that expression uh, when you have it after four years. Well, since I'm dealing with years, and since you look at this and go, we're starting out here, we're adding this um, each year. This is a straightforward linear um, expression you have to come up with. Think think back to when you did a slope intercept form. Your intercept would be 37,148 plus your slope is what's changing every year, 15,000 miles times t. That's my variable where t is in, in years. So this is an expression for the number of miles that appear on the odometer at the end of each year. So after the end of year one, it's 37,000 plus 15,000 times t. OK, so uh, this is the first answer. There is the expression. And now the last thing you need to do, evaluate it when uh, you have t equals 4 years. So the second part, t equals 4. And you get 37,148 plus 15,000 times t, which in this case is 4. We're inputting. Again, do order of operations. 4 times 15,000, you should get 60,000 plus the 37,148. Our final answer for the problem is 97,148 miles. Do not forget the units. So that is the final answer. Um, again, you should have been able to do that without my help, I hope, because this, is a, this was just a thinking through process.